Hi everyone, we will start our journey by exploring Orichimer and Orichratus, two robust solutions for effectively managing user identities within your application. But before we get our hands dirty, let me break down what each one does. Orichydra. Formally, Orichydra is an open source of to an OpenID Connect server that secures the application and APIs with state-of-the-art security. It provides a powerful framework for managing authentication, authorization, and user consent flows. In simple terms, Rehydra is like a guardian for your apps and online services. It ensures that only the right people can access them by managing the process of logging in and verifying identities. It's like the bouncer at the club, making sure only invited guests get in. Orichratus, on the other hand, is a secure and flexible identity and user management system. It allows developers to handle user registration, login, profile management, and account recovery in a reliable and customizable way. In simple words, Orichratus is your go-to system for managing user account and identities. It handles everything from syncing up and logging in to keeping their profile updated and secure. Think of it as your personal assistant for managing user accounts online. Let's talk a little how they interact with each other. Orichida and Orichratus work hand in hand to provide a seamless and secure experience for both developers and users. Hydra takes care of the authentication and authorization aspect and shows that only authorized users can access protected resources. Meanwhile, Kratos handles the user management side, make it easier for developers to register users, handle login processes, and manage user accounts. And what are the advantages? The metric happens when you combine these two. Unlike traditional identity providers like Google or Facebook, where log contesting can be tricky, Oris Duo lets you. Craft customized login flows. Simulate different login experience with custom fields for registration and user data collection. Scope out permissions. Precisely define what resources users can access within your application. Register users on the fly. Create test users locally with specific roles and permissions perfect for simulating various user scenarios. In summary, this local testing environment empowers you to iterate and refine your authorization logic without relying on the external IDPs as Google, Facebook, etc. Now that we have explored Hydra and Kratos individually, let's delve into the major behind the scenes. We will use the OAuth to authorization code flow as an example to illustrate how these two tools interact and facilitate secure authentication. Let's start. Let's imagine a user trying to access a specific application. The user initiates the process by logging into that application. This triggers the application to send an authorization request to Hydra, the authorization server. Upon receiving the request, Hydra recognizes the need for user login and fires off a login challenge to Kratos, the identity provider. Kratos then presents a login page to the user. The user interacts with this page, entering their login credentials. Once authenticated, Kratos sends a login response back to Hydra. In some scenarios, user consent might be required. If so, Hydra would send a consent challenge to Kratos, which would then display a consent request to the user. The user would decide whether to grant consent and their response is sent back to Kratos. Kratos would then notify Hydra of the user's consent decision. Whether user consent is required or not, upon receiving a successful login response from Kratos, Hydra would issue an authorization code and send it back to the application. The application would then use this authorization code to request an access and an ID token from Hydra. Finally, Hydra would grant the application the requested tokens and the application would inform the user that access has been granted. 
As you can see, Hydra and Kratos work together seamlessly to manage user login, consent and grant access to the application. This do simplify the auth to flow, making optimization a smooth and secure process. Next, let's examine configuration for both Kratos and Hydra. Moving on to Kratos, we will dissect the Docker composition for Kratos, examining how its sources are structured and managed within a Docker environment. Kratos Migrate. Configure Kratos Migration Source. Set environment variables, volumes for data storage and restart policy. No changes are made here from the Quick Start Guide provided on the official site. Kratos Self Service UE. Set up Kratos Self Service UE, specify of image, port, environment variables, and remote network configuration. Kratos Public URL. These variables define the public URL for accessing Kratos, typically used for interaction with Kratos public facing endpoints such as user registration and login. Kratos Browser URL specifies the URL that the browser will use to communicate with Kratos. It typically sets to the local address where Kratos is accessible. Hydra Admin URL These variables define the URL for accessing the administrative interface of our Hydra as an OAuth 2 and OpenID Connect server. And port specifies the port number on which the creator of those UE node servers will listen for incoming connections. Next variables are not described in the default quick start configuration but are not served for running, otherwise, it will not start. Cookie secret. A secret value used for encrypting and decrypting cookies in the application. It provides an additional layer of security for cookie-based authentication mechanism. Cross-site request forgery cookie name specifies the name of the cross-site request forgery protection cookie used by Kratos. This variable's protection helps prevent unauthorized action being performed on behalf of a user. The last one is cross-site request forgery cookie secret, a secret value used for generating and validating CSRF tokens. Kratos. Kratos defined Kratos servers, specifies dependencies, image, ports, environment variables, command volumes, and network configuration. Configuration file contains a session setting and parameters required for the proper functionalities of the Kratos service. I will describe it in detail right after the Docker Compose file. And the last one is Mail Supplier, configure Mail Supplier servers for testing email functionality. And it's also nothing change made from the Quick Start Guide. So let's continue with the configuration file. Kratos YAM file defines the configuration of the Kratos, the setting and options that shape the behavior and features of the Kratos identity management system. Let's start with DNS, specify the data source name as memory indicated usage of an in memory database. Serve defines the serving configuration for Kratos, public set base URL for public operations, course enables and admin set base URL for administrative tasks. Self-service. Configure self-service setting. Specify default browser return URL and allowed return URLs. Enable password-based authentication method with specific configuration. Define the wireless self-service flow like error handling, setting, logging out and registration. Log defines logging setting. Secrets. Configure secrets used by Kratos. Cookie and cipher secrets should be replaced for security for real configuration. Identity. Focus on identity setting. Specify the default schema ID and URL for identity schema file. Identity schema defines structure and validation rule for user identity ensuring consistency and security in user data management. The identity configuration is crucial because it defines how user identities are managed within the system. We will look at it in the next step. Courier configures Kratos to use a courier for a mail delivery. Specifies connection URI for the SMTP server. 
And the last one of two provider. Configures of two provider setting. Specifies URL of the Oracle Hydro instance for Kratos interaction. Specifying the URL of the Hydro instance is essential as Hydro acts as the of two provider. Handling token issuance, authentication, and authorization processes. Identity schema. This file defines the basic schema for user focusing on the mail and password for login. It acts as foundation requiring only a wallet main address. But the beauty here is that it's extensible. You can add more user traits like name, phone number, or even custom field depending on your needs. Next, let's proceed with Hydro setting files. Hydra server defines configuration for the Hydra. Specify image version, ports for public access, admin access, and token user. Configures volumes for persistent data storage and configuration files. Configuration files contain a session setting and parameters required for the proper functioning of the Hydra servers. I will describe it in detail right after the Docker compose. Sets environment variable, including the DNS for SQLite database, define the common to serve Hydra with specified configuration and restart policies, specifies dependencies on the other services and network configuration. Hydra migrate configures Hydra migration servers. No changes are made here from the quick start guide provided on the official site and nothing interesting. Now let's shift our focus on the configuration of Hydra. Here we will explore the setting and parameters that define the behavior and functionality of the Hydra instance. Serve. Specifies server setting, partially for cookies and cross origin resource sharing configurations. Set same site mode for cookies and defines core setting for both public and admin endpoints. Course for the admin endpoint is specifically enabled during local testing. URLs. Defined URLs for various endpoints, including self, content, login, logout, and identity providers URLs. These Kratos URLs are a session for proper functioning and integration of the system, directing users to nursery pages and facilitating communication between different components. Secrets. Specify system secrets such as cryptographic keys essential for security measures within the system. These secrets should be replaced with real security generated values for your system. OIDC configures OpenID Connect settings, particularly subject identifiers, supporting both private and public. Define salt for private subject identifiers, which should be replaced with a real secret for security reasons. And the last one is log, that set up logging configuration. Really, it's all from the configuration side. Let's see how it will be working. Let's start our services. I will start with Oehrainer. And then let's start Oehrainer. Let's test our solution together. I will start with create of application client in Hydra. I will prepare for you Mall collection. We'll create client with uh, authorization code grant to test our solution. Direct your URI will be local cost and I need scope only open ID and offline for small testing. Send request for creation. The client is created. That means that our hydra is working. I will copy our new client and set it to my test Golang application.
It can think of my application, client ID, redirect URI, authorization and token URI, and scopes. Let's rerun it. And looks how it will be working. Okay, for the run. It's simple, I'm um, only for logging. Sign in. Yes, what is more important now is that we can see sign in page of Kratos. Let's sign up. Create some, I don't know, test user. And that suggested password will be okay. Sign up. The account is already existing. <laughs> Looks like I was created it before. Okay. And Kratos suggests our give our consent with open ID and offline scope for application. Let's check this ID. This ID is ID of our client in Hydra that was created in the previous step. Yeah, it's the same as our new client. Give provided scope, allow. Yeah, and there was the, that is important that we can log in. We have access token, ID token, reference token, our token time bearer, and so on. So our application is working. What I would like also to show you before I log in, I will clean my cookie. You can in Oricratus create an identity so you can create user for me i will use very very simple uh, structure but you can expand it for your needs what is important we uh, can specify email and hash password for hash password i will use uh, bcrypt let's make our password as a three one three two encrypt yeah the hashes mm -hmm. and it will be user b send and my user b was created try to log in with them into our application, sign in and use this username and my password for you one, three, two, sign in. Yeah, it's working, it's the same. I provide my score. So, um, what is important here that you can uh, specify your client and you can create users in a uh, Kratos identity and you can test it very easily with different scope, with different traits and so on. And the last thing that I would like to show that uh, all the things that was uh, shown during the creation it's uh, quickly modified uh, quick start yaml yeah for hydra and quick start yaml for writers you can find it in official documentation and modify it uh, in the way you need so if you have some question regarding to our hydra or writers or you have or you want to have some videos about it, please uh, send uh, your thoughts in the comment. I will try to answer and create new video. Good luck!